Elson Craig is one of the directors and producers behind the Amazon horror series Them. I'm Kevin Jacobson of Gold Derby here with Nelson. And I want to start with just what appealed to you about uh, Little Marvin's vision that became a kind of jumping off point for you as a director. Well, I mean, it's it's the you know, it's so fresh. It's just such a unique project and a unique voice. You know, and I when I first read it and, you know, met with met with him, it was he just had like a really enthusiastic like love of horror love of movies television and it was his first project so I was like wow like this is a really amazing you know challenging voice um to collaborate with so I was I was really really you know just excited to kind of be a part of that team be a part of his voice and vision and uh yeah it was and it's you know it's unique material which you don't get very often in in this business yeah so you you directed the pilot. You also directed the second episode and a few others later on in the season. But I wanted to talk specifically about the pilot because obviously it's very important to establish what the series is going to be. And I think the tension is pretty clear from <laughs> that brief scene we see in the South in the beginning. And then later on with the neighbors just immediately being passive aggressive and racist to this family um what was it you were hoping to establish right away for viewers beyond what was already on the page sure well i mean you know when when uh, little marvin and uh, you know i talked about it it was you know he was like it's not so much horror it's terror you know so i was like oh that's interesting you know because it's yes there are shocks and there are jump scares but you know the goal my i looked at it you know as a story about what does it feel like to experience institutionalized racism everywhere you go every moment there are no safe spaces you know what is what is that what how do you translate that into a uh, into a, a, a tv show or a pilot and so we we just you know i really while it's unsettling to watch sometimes it's like we really i wanted the viewer to feel a sense of tension and dread throughout the whole thing you know even in like the kind of happier moments which are very few and far between but there's always always a sense of of tension, dread, and and kind of, you know, that that inescapable feeling. So I think that's that's really what we tried to bring to it right away. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and um, the the end of the pilot is framed in such an interesting way because um, something happens to their dog, and uh, we see Lucky going out into the street. Uh, yeah. I think with a gun. And and if you looked at that out of context from the yeah. perspective of some of these white neighbors. It would be like, here's this crazy black woman with a gun out in the streets, but it's different since we're seeing it from a different perspective. And it's this really upsetting kind of dramatic irony as a viewer, I think, when you realize how that looks. Um, Can you talk about working with perspective and things like that on the series? Yeah, absolutely. Because, you know, we, we really, you know did rewrites for that ending and weren't, you know, it's, it's, it's a, it's a really important moment and you really want like that intensity of kind of emotion and, and that, you know, it's a show about, you know, otherness, like you mentioned, and it's like, what does it feel like, you know, if that was Betty Wendell, you know, the uh, Allison Pills character doing that, it would be a very different reaction. It would be a completely different story. So, you know, little Marvin and myself, we wanted to tell the story from, you know, the, the, the point of view of the Emery's and what it's like to be, you know, black and bear and have try to defend your house. You know, how does that, how does that resolve? And it doesn't resolve well. So, yeah. So we, you know, we really tried to, you know, put you in the, in the experience of that family and try to try to make the viewer feel like what it would feel like to be in that situation, you know, and, and like, you know, the dog, it's like, we actually shot footage of the dog being, murdered and it was like amazon was like you guys are going to show the dog dying and we were like we're going to shoot it it's like and it was like you know it was it ultimately we don't think we we didn't use it but it was like it's just we you know we wanted to really not be shy about the things that we we showed and the emotions that we evoked so we you know we went we went for it 
certainly. Um, and there's a pretty distinct visual style overall to the series that you help establish in the pilot. Something that I picked up on and I think other writers have definitely wrote, written about is how much of a Douglas Sirk vibe there is with kind of the mm -hmm. saturated colors, 50s melodrama kind of picture perfect style. Yeah. Um, and I read that Little Marvin was inspired by those kinds of things. There's also kind of a vibe of the Jordan Peele films more recent films um how did you go about integrating those kinds of uh references not only just on a visual level obviously but in terms yeah. of themes well yeah it's i mean that was kind of the challenge was like you know this bubble gum kind of like you know marty mcfly 50s look you know which is that polished kind of you know perfection you know and that, that kind of white pick fence world and there's the the reality of like kind of the horror so for me i drew on a lot of like you know, 70s horror movies, like to bring like a lot of greatness to it. And, you know, like we we wanted the space to be uh, like, you know, polished. But as we get into the story, we kind of break it down. And we, we you know, we again, we're playing with that idea of safe spaces like, you know, the, the wallpaper in the Emory House, you know, was agonized over. And we, you know, we picked really aggressive kind of patterns and geometric patterns and, things that were not exactly comforting, you know, it's like, it's a mid-century house, but you don't want it to feel too, too, uh, too bright, you know? So it's, and we, you know, we played a lot with colors, like the Emery's world is reds and browns and, and blacks and the, uh, you know, Betty Wendell's house is all blues and kind of icy coldness. So, you know, we'll see, you'll see that play through. Yeah. So it was kind of fun to kind of, you know, put a little Texas Chainsaw Massacre into like a, you know, like a 1950s Hitchcockian, you know, vertigo kind of polish. So that, that was a really fun thing to play. And, and, and I think, you know, I think was effective. <laughs> you guys tell me. Yeah, I think so. But um, this, this ensemble, we have to talk about them. It, it's just, they're very committed to their roles. And I think a lot is asked of them emotionally to convey that level of terror. And then, yeah. you know, for the white characters, just this, pure hatred um <laughs> what did you do as a director to help guide the those performances and make sure that the actors felt safe but are still giving these very heightened performances sure sure it was it was a real challenge you know and it, like deborah you know ashley the two leads uh, melody every you know uh, it was an amazing group of artists and you know, it was a little bit traumatic. I, you know, some of those images I still carry with me, you know, it's like, you know, it's, it's, it's scary stuff. I've got, you know, a little two-year-old son at home and, you know, to, to see some of those things and the demons and some of those really scary moments, you know, they are, it is scary. And, you know, we've got children on set, we have to be really in really kind of aggressive situations with, with the content. And, it takes a lot of work, you know, it's, it's hard for the actors. It's hard for the actors to really, especially on a schedule that's so quick and so fast, we're shooting so much, you know, you, you just have a couple of weeks to shoot, shoot an episode or a pilot and, and you have, they have to trust you fully. And it's, it takes a little bit of time to kind of open somebody, you know, up to that level of emotional intensity and to do it like five, six, seven, 20 times in a row, you know, it's really draining. And, and, you know, Deborah and Ashley were just such amazing, you know, artists and they brought it every take you know they're just they they were not uh you know it was a, it was a you know good chance for them to really be seen in a big piece as the leads and and they wanted to deliver and you know all i can do as a director is really you know be there for them um you know push them where i can uh you know and you know and like that big pie sequence at the end of episode two you know it's a big it's a really difficult scene it's seven minutes with almost no dialogue of someone eating a piece of pie you know so we we really you know we worked on that scene and we worked on her performance and we worked on those moments because it all has to be unsaid and you know just the flick of an eye like you know blink of an eye a tear it's like those little moments are really difficult to get and she delivered in such an incredible way and and you know when when Ashley has to eat that pie and have all those PTSD flashbacks of the, the gas chamber torture and stuff that he went through he I think he did that in two takes like we didn't you know he was ready for it he ate that entire thing and I was like after the first take I was like Ashley like we have it <laughs> let's do one more just because we need it we need to take for safety and you know so they were amazing and they delivered you know w w in an incredible way sure um well also there has been this discussion ever since the series dropped on prime about just how far the series goes in its bleakness and 
you know, about black trauma. Was that a discussion that you and the team were kind of expecting early on that it would cause such a discussion? Yeah. Yeah. We, we knew, I mean, we knew that it was, you know, not going to be for everybody and it was going to be, you know, too intense for some people. So it was, it was known we uh, LM's vision was clear on what he wanted to do and he was uncompromising in it, which I respect. And, you know, we, uh, we wanted to kind of, you know, it was my job to create that vision on the screen for the moments that I was in control of. And, uh, you know, that that's, I think we did it, you know, we, we did it in the way that he wanted it to be done and we wanted it to be done. Hmm. Well, um, I, I also heard that you guys shut down production for several months before coming back for the final episodes because of 2020, obviously. Yeah. Um, w- were there any uh, challenges in picking up the pieces after all those months? Yeah, yeah. It was um, it was it was tricky just because of the pandemic and just the time. I mean, we shot. You know, we we still had a couple. Um, we had a couple uh, scenes left from the pilot that we had to do at the very end. So it was it was an amazingly. Like, it was it was it was difficult for the actors because we had to shoot up just a couple pickups of pieces of scenes and um, but it was you know Amazon was super supportive of what we needed to do and and uh, you know we were able to uh, we were able to get it done and kind of at that point it was really a family kind of feeling as well because the, the cat you know we, we'd been together for so long and and uh, and the cast had been together and it, we all trusted each other so it was while it was difficult you know with all the masks and uh, you know all, you know everything else it, we, we got through it and and we were able to you know get what we needed. Well, I mean, you've directed in the past on on a few shows, but only like one episode in a season type of situation. And with this show, I mean, you've directed almost half of the season in, in your yeah. producer. And um, I'm curious what that experience was like as far as being so involved with a series as a director kind of for the first time. Yeah, well, I mean, it's a big challenge, um, but, uh, you know, I- as, as a director or creator, it's like, you know, the, the bigger the challenge, kind of the bigger the payoff. So I, I know I really, I, I loved this group and I really loved uh, Little Marvin's, you know, vision for it. And uh, it was, you know, it's an honor to just be a part of kind of something that, that has that strength of vision and clarity of voice, you know, so I, you know, it's challenging and it's, you know, you shoot for such a long period of time. I mean, it's grueling, you know, to, to like be on a project for months and months and months and months, but but it's rewarding too, because you can get a little deeper and you can dig deeper into the material. So, so I, I found it quite rewarding. Mm. Well, going back to kind of the fifties melodrama influence, you were also director and cinematographer behind Ratched this season. Yeah. <laughs> um, you've done a number of Ryan Murphy shows as a sure. cinematographer. Um, what kind of challenges were there as far as developing the look of, of Ratched? Well, I mean, working with Ryan is amazing. I mean, he's such a, just a, I mean, he's a creator. He just has, he's just an amazing person and energy to be around. And, you know, I've done a whole bunch of Ryan Murphy projects really where I kind of where I started directing. He gave my first job on American Horror Story as a director and, um, you know, doing Ratchet was amazing. He was like, Ryan was like, let's, let's do, uh, let's do Hitchcock. Let's do Vertigo. Let's do, you know, like, let's just, let's do that. And let's, let's pace it like that too, you know, kind of, and he's one of the only producers that can kind of get something like that made and, you know, build those massive sets. And, you know, we've got Sarah Paulson in there is just amazing. And, you know, somebody I've worked with a bunch and it was just a great group, you know, and I, I loved, um, yeah, I just that, like creating that world was such a, such a, such a fun thing because, you know, we found this like Ryan and I, we all drove out to this casino, uh, which was an old 1940s hotel that we wanted to shoot the interior of the uh, asylum in. And we ended up we wouldn't we couldn't shoot there. I think they had sold it recently. So Ryan was like, OK, we'll just build it. So we just built the, like the entire like amazing, beautiful uh, interior of that uh, asylum. And it's just, you don't, you know, there's not a lot of people you get to work with that can do that kind of thing. So it was an amazing experience, you know, just those sets were just, and the, I mean, the costumes like Lou, his costume designer is just so great. I mean, it's like, it's just, you know, all the people that Ryan works with on those shows are such great storytellers um, that it's just, it's really fun to just watch those things come to life. Yeah. Well, having done these shows with kind of a darker subject matter, 
horror edgier types of yeah. shows what is it what is it about these this kind of genre for you that appeals to your sensibilities <laughs> as an artist I don't know I always keep doing these like darker things I, you know I think you know I'm I'm Korean, I'm half Korean. And I think otherness and kind of like being on the outside of things has given me like, I'm just interested in those kind of stories, you know, like the stories Ryan was telling really just, we clicked as like kind of a creative, creative uh, collaboration. And I just, I don't know. I think it's just a way in to tell unique stories. You know, it kind of gives the, gives, gives me something to bite into and, you know, yeah. So I, I don't know. I, you know, I keep, I keep getting attracted to those kind of projects. So we'll, we'll see, you know, I'd like to maybe do a comedy at some point where there's, where it's a little bit lighter, but you know, time will tell. Yeah. Maybe a darker comedy, <laughs> exactly. uh, you know? Um, well, just going back to them in, in these final minutes here, what would you say for you were, were the bigger aspects of the show that had an impact that you personally will take with you as you kind of move forward? in your career? Well, I mean, I think the main thing is like, you know, you just have to, you know, as a director, you know, and a creator, you just, you really want to be there for the actors and help, you know, like my job is to like help them feel comfortable, guide them through those moments, those really difficult performance moments. And, you know, I really respect those people and what they did on this show. And, and I, you know, moving forward, I just want to work, I want to continue to work with really great actors and, and you know, help them, uh, you know, create amazing moments, you know, whatever those may be. Hmm. Excellent. Well, um, for those of you watching, hit like and subscribe for more interviews and head to goldderby.com to make your Emmy predictions. Thank you so much, Nelson, for joining me today. Thank you. Thanks for having me.